so we're making a latex tube, pleasure tube, standalone. Um, so it's gonna be open at one end and sealed at the other. So what I've done is I've measured 13 inches wide, marked in several places, measured 24 and a half inches long because we masked it with pi. Um, and that'll give us our circumference as well. So, so I've measured that in several places. And then I'm gonna take a metal ruler to use as my straight guide. And we can always clean it up a little bit, a little bit later, but it's more or less straight. We can trim it to, to size later too, but so. Oh, so you're gonna use rotary cutter. It's gonna be nice and sharp. Make sure it's a good, good sharp blade. And cut right along your, pushing usually works better. So you're gonna cut right along your metal ruler. It's firm, make sure you keep good contact. It should lift right off. So you have a nice clean cut. Um, Latex is pretty prone to getting getting snags in the material if you lift it up. So you're gonna to wanna to make it as much in all one cut as possible. Um, Cause if it snags, then it's like snagging pantyhose. It's more likely to run later, which is not much fun. So we're going to cut the lengthwise. We have a cutting mat underneath. Get, get it nice and smooth cut. Probably should cut that part off. But. And again, lay the blade right next to the ruler. Nice, smooth motion. And here, unfortunately, you're gonna need to replace and you might have to lift your blade, which is understandable, especially on a bigger piece like this. But just get it aligned again as close as you can. And maybe see where it Cut. And we can always trim the edges if needed. Nice pressure, nice smooth, all the way up. And then always retract your blade so you don't wind up cutting your finger. So if your blade's not super sharp, you might have some pieces here that didn't quite cut through. And pull it apart. If it's real struggling, you can cut through again. Again, we can trim once we get this big piece separated from in the one piece. You're gonna keep your fingers out of the way of the blade because it can cut through latex, it can cut through skin. It's not fun. All right, so we have the right shape. Get this big piece out of the way. We have a little bit more flexibility to work here. So you can see where we've kind of got a little bit of some, some snags some uneven places. So cut through and then go again. Do the best we can to line that up. And you can of course use the lines on your on your cutting board if that helps kind of give an idea of what you're looking at. Line that up as best we can. See if we can make that a nice smooth edge. There, that's better. And the nice thing is, most of these don't have to be absolutely perfectly straight. You know, bonus points if it is. But you're just going to want to make it as straight as you can so that when you glue everything together, the lines are nice and the whole thing looks pretty and everything matches up so there's less swearing. So we're gonna get this nice and even. And when you cut it from the main piece, the smoother you can get at it at the beginning, the less work you have. But again, we want to make 
the latex as smooth as possible because it'll be less, less tearing of the material and less trouble for us later on. Honestly, this rotary probably could use a fresh blade pretty soon. I will say the fresh blades on the rotary, you're definitely gonna wanna watch your fingers on that one. And again, attract it. It's a good habit to get into. And then we just got some scraps here. Just barely hanging on. good for the next step. Yeah. So the next step is we are going to create a tunnel. So we're gonna fold, glue, glue, fold, run our brayer along here, get it all nice and flat. And then we'll go to the next step after that. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you wear gloves because the heptane glue, well, let's tape it first actually. Make sure that's covered in my glue so it doesn't evaporate. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to use the 3M brand of glue painters tape because that is the only one I found that does not have problems with latex. Everything else leaves residue because I think it's latex based. And so that's kind of a problem to get off. So you're gonna tape it about an inch, an inch up from there. Nice one here. And this is gonna give us a guide, keep the glue from getting in places it's not gonna want it, you're not gonna want it. Um, you're not necessarily gonna fill the whole line, but it's gonna keep it from getting too much on the other one. In fact, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. Give it a little bit less. And you're not gonna to wanna to leave the blue painter's tape on the latex for very long. Um, don't leave it overnight, for instance, because it winds up adhering to the latex and it's really tricky to get off. Um, I'm getting all the residues off is troublesome too. So we've got the inner guide for that. Now, so we're gonna put the glue along here on this side of the tape, on this one. So it's nice to have a backing for the latex because it can be kind of it can curl once you put the glue on, so we like putting a, a little row of tape on the back, too. And this one, since it's loose, I'll probably do it in pieces, so I don't try to tape it to itself. This one doesn't have to be too exact. This is just providing structure. You don't really need it for any measurement or lines or guides. Something I didn't mention earlier. <laughs> Something I didn't mention earlier is you're gonna want to make sure when you're working with gloves without, or when you're working with latex without your gloves, you're gonna make sure your hands are clean. You're gonna Hermione, make, come here. When you're working with latex without gloves, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your hands are clean. You don't have any uh, lotion or um, oils on your hand. You're gonna to wanna to make them as, as clean as possible because oils are really bad for um, latex. It'll wind up really messing with the structure of it. So we've got that done. We've got that taped down nicely both sides. So we're envisioning that we're gonna fold this down, tape this up. So thinking along those lines, we're gonna to wanna to make Nice little protective guide here. Kind of like we did on this side. 
again. Not too much, just kind of do your best to make sure it matches what you're looking at over here. It's not an exact science, but the closer you can get to it matching, the less trouble you'll have with glue seeping where it's not supposed to go. that pretty clean line along here. Make sure those edges are down nice. Keep the glue from seeping where it doesn't belong. And we do the same thing over here. So we're gonna wanna put a backing on this again to keep it from curling when we put the glue on. So again, because it's backing, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a nice I guess make sure you don't have a lot of overlap on there because gluing tape to latex is never fun. But uh, yeah, just some quick and dirty reinforcement here. And it's not perfect, it'll still curl some when you put the glue on, but it's way better. And you'll see I'm kind of overlapping my tape a little bit here to make it a little thicker. A little more reinforced, that's your choice. You don't have to. In fact, you don't have to put reinforcing tape at all, but I find it makes it a little bit easier. And we'll put a little bit more here on the end. And call it good. So now we have a piece all taped off, ready to, to glue again. Our top one is gonna have a guide piece on the shiny side here. So you're gonna put glue right here. And on the back, we've got reinforcement. And on this, it's a bit of the reverse. We've got a guide piece on the inside. Flip it over, we've got reinforcement here. So, next thing we'll do is we'll put gloves on, because uh, you don't wanna get the glue on your hands if you can help it. Glue here, glue here. We're gonna let, it, let the glue sit for a little bit. Um, just a few seconds to a minute. Um, some people when they're making latex will wind up leaving the glue longer to set because the longer you leave it, the, the better, the firmer it's, it adheres to itself. Um, but because we want a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of ability to move things if we need to, I let it sit a few seconds and then bond it. So um, let's get to that. So to get it to stick better, we definitely don't want anything becoming unstuck when we glue. We're gonna use solvent and heptane. Kind of dangerous stuff, use it with ventilation. Don't use it in your house without opening a window. Um, we're gonna just kind of get a little bit on a rag. Kind of smear it along. Again, you don't need to saturate it. It doesn't need to be wet, just enough to kind of get all the any impurities off, any of the markers that I left, dust, anything that's going to keep it from, from gluing. All right, that was easy. Let that dry a little bit. And now we have glue. We're going to use a small paintbrush. Here, glue to a small bit at a time. Do your best not to get glue on the inside like that because otherwise it'll wind up sticking to the inside of the tube and we don't really want to do that. So everybody does things a little bit differently, but I tend to clean that up a little bit. It's still got heptane solvent on it, so that'll get the glue away. Um, I tend to do just a little bit at a time. A little bit of glue on this side. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of time elapsing between when we put the glue down and when we don't. And let it sit for a minute, let it cure for a bit. And then place that carefully, line it up, press it down, make sure it's nice and tight. Get a brayer, which is pretty useful tool to have. It's just 
firm rolls. It comes in latex and other um, or rubber and other materials. I like the rubber. Press really nicely hard down on it. Nice and firm, get all the bubbles out. And then you'll see it's stuck. So we're gonna do that same system all the way down along here. And then when we're done with that, we'll, we'll uh, brayer it out again, make sure everything's nice and smooth, and then we'll attach the end. So as we did before, we're gonna apply a little bit of glue at a time. Some people apply it all in one go and then lay it down all in one go. I find that to be a little bit stressful, but it's an option. So, glue on one side. Glue on the other. Make sure you get in that piece where they're meeting from the last batch of glue. So there's no gaps, because this is inflatable. It's gotta be sealed. A little bit more here. And let it sit for a couple of seconds. In fact, I'll put this over here so it doesn't get doesn't glue itself to the mat. Again, let it sit so it cures. If you put it down right away, you can have success, but it's a little bit challenging because it tends to be slippery and it's likely to slip out of place and it just takes forever to, to dry. So wait until it's tacky and then lay it down along that nice, nice line. Hit it with a brayer real good. Make sure it's stuck and keep moving on. So one thing you're gonna wanna know is that uh, latex glue, unlike PVC glue, latex glue takes some time to cure. So what you're working on is not necessarily gonna be bonded until probably 24 hours afterwards. So you're gonna to wanna to really keep that, uh, treat it gently, don't pull on it too much. Um, of course, you're gonna to wanna to test that it's inflated, but and that it holds air, but you don't wanna really abuse it too much. So we're just gonna keep going step by step down the line until it's done. Okay, so. You glue it down, making a tube, which is kind of cool. Um, glued it down. One thing I did need to mention is when you're gluing latex, you can't pull, it stretches. Latex by nature stretches. So when you're gluing it down, you can't pull to make it straight or you can't pull hard to make it straight uh, and put it down because by the time you're done at the end, you wind up having a lot of extra and it will have stretched out and one end will be way off from the other. That always happens a little bit. And in this case, it's nice because we can just trim the end. Um, but if you pull it too much, it's gonna be a big problem. Um, but right now we are done making the two tunnel part. Um, so we're gonna take the, the blue tape off and you're gonna wanna do that fairly soon because it sticks to it pretty well. So if you don't take it off right away, it'll leave, leave a lot more residue. So again, 3M tape's the best for that. Off-brand tends to be more latex-based adhesive, which means more adhesive gets bonded to the latex, and that's just a mess. So pull all the blue tape off here, which is easier without gloves, but I'm gonna be using them again in a minute. Pull that off. You can see we have a nice clean seam along here, which we'll clean with heptane later. So that, that part done. <coughs> Bless you. I need to see if this is still. Okay, cool. I don't know how much of this I'm getting. <laughs> All right, and now we've got this. And so you can either turn the tube inside out or pull the tape through whatever's easiest for you. But make sure you get all that tape off and then we'll go to the next step. I like using the tape to turn it inside out and make sure my seams are nice. See a nice clean seam thanks to using the tape. It's kind of a lot of tape. And it does add up, but it's a heck of a lot easier than trying without it. So we have a nice, clean seam. And then we'll turn, we want the shiny side to 
to be on the outside. So latex, most sheeting has a shiny side that reflects and a matte side that doesn't. And so we want the shiny side to be close to the human skin and therefore on the outside. So what we're gonna do, you can either pull one end through or put it like that and you can see the shiny bits out. So, see how this is mismatched? Even though I cut it right, even though I taped it so I wouldn't pull it too much, you're still gonna sometimes wind up with a little bit off. So I'm gonna take the rotary cutting tool. Is that over there? The rotary tool? Yep. Oh yeah, awesome, thanks. So we're gonna take the rotary cutter, being careful. We're gonna take the metal screwdriver, um, or not, either way. And carefully, cut a, cut a nice straight line here. Now notice, I'm not cutting both layers. I'm just cutting the one, one at a time. So, see how that's mismatched a bit? Gonna line it up on a line the best I can. Now I'm gonna wait for the, I'm gonna wait for the ruler. Where do you go? Got to do things right. So this is nice to kind of keep it. Getting, and that way you can save as much of the latex as possible. Again, keep your fingers out of the way. Nice firm press down along the rear. Nope, oh, that dull blade. I have to try it again on this side. Having the tool sharp is really much, much more helpful. But we cut ourselves a little bit of slack in the beginning, which is pretty handy in case you run into things like this. Ah, there we go. So we got a nice clean edge there. We'll do the same thing to this other end. Make sure that the, what's that inner layer is not in the way. You don't want to cut that again. Lay it straight. This one's pretty close to even, but we're going to give it a nice clean cut anyway. There we go. So now we're going to... So you've got it and you're going to take that, make sure one's longer than the other, because what we're going to do is we're going to fold the inner layer to the out. And we're going to tape it off first, and we'll show you how to do that. So, I have my nozzle. I have marked where I want the center of my nozzle to go. And this nozzle is going to look like this to the outside. So, it's nice. You can recess it. Pull the plug out, inflate it, and then recess it back in. So we're going to cut a little, little X here. Mark where we know we want this. Make sure just to get the outside layer, not the inside layer. And turn it inside out because we're going to wind up gluing this flush to this. So I've, I have a little circle tool. You can use whatever you like um, that approximates it, but we're gonna make it about just a little bit under size for this ring right here on the inside, because we wanna make it nice and clear space for this to come out and recess. Um, but we want it to have lot nice bonding to stick to that. So what I've done, as I make the circle just, see, it's adjustable. So just slightly smaller than that excess space right there. So that's what we're gonna cut into this. So we're gonna mark it first. Silver Sharpie is very handy. It comes off with the heptane. So mark it. And there are other ways of doing this too. You can glue it on and then cut that, 
cut that piece out once it's glued on, whatever your preferences is. So we're gonna use small scissors. I like the kind, Fiskars makes a version called Needle Nose. It goes all, the sharp goes all the way to the tip. Um, they're very pointy, very sharp at the tip. Very good for small pieces. Generally, scissors are not your friend with latex. So you're gonna wanna try to use the circle tool, but obviously something like this, the, the circular cutting tool is not gonna work. Rotary tool. So we're just gonna do small, make it as even and clean on that line as possible. And cut, make sure we just cut this piece. Take your time, make it as nice and smooth and clean as possible. And no matter how you cut, you're gonna need to do a couple little cleanups after. Any, any sharp edges, any points are going to make it easier for the material to run, like we discussed earlier. Cool. So now we have a hole. And what we'll wind up doing once I clean that hole up is we'll wind up taking the nozzle, flat, flush nozzle. We're going to put glue on, or we're going to heptane it, clean it, right? Clean this, clean this piece here and line it up, make sure we can see. <laughs> this is a little awkward, but make sure we can see the nozzle through, make sure the nozzle can poke through, make sure we have plenty of glue on there um, and glue it down. Yeah. Okay, so we have cut nice clean little hole for our, for our uh, valve and we're gonna we've cleaned the valve we've cleaned and so we're gonna center we're gonna center the tube the hole on the tube Let's see if I can make sure you can see this and when you clean things they will stick together um, so we're gonna center it there Gonna make sure it stays in place. Yeah. Mark with a either a silver sharpie or gel pen. Make sure we know where our guide is here. Pretty close to centered. I take our glue and our paintbrush. I like using small paint brushes because they give me a lot of control, but um, slightly larger ones are just fine too, as long as you can control where you put the glue. I'm gonna glue this and glue that. And like we did before, we're gonna leave a little bit of time for everything to set up before we bond them together. Make sure everything's nice, evenly covered again. It's going to be inflatable, so you want to make sure everything's as sealed as possible. Typically, I would put tape underneath there. Actually, I think I'll go ahead and do that. Just a small piece of tape to make sure it doesn't get glued on the inside here. Let's see, it protects it a little bit. The last thing you want to do is glue your tube together in ways you didn't want to glue it. Make sure there's a nice, thin, even. And while we'll wind up cleaning the glue off on the outside, it's better not to have to clean too much. The heptane does kind of change the texture of the latex. It curls it a bit, so all the better. If you can use the amount of glue you need to get it sealed without actually causing problems. So I'm gonna line this up. The glue's getting nice and tacky. Line it up, lay it down. Don't press it down yet. Make sure there's plenty space for it to poke through. That's good, that's exactly what we want. Press down, and if you have a small brayer, you can go around the edge um, this one isn't really built for that, so we'll just 
press nice and firmly for several seconds all the way around and keep going until we're really comfortable with it being glued down and then we'll clean everything off and we'll seal the ends okay so we are to the point where we have the uh, tube completed the tube part completed the little opening here that we're gonna fix we're gonna um, seal up and then we have the valve installed as you can see it is installed and it can sink back in so that's good it has room to do that we checked on the outside that it has room to move which is nice and now we're gonna do one last thing on the inside before we seal it up we're gonna take a small screwdriver a very very small one and we're going to very gently work our way tap into the edge where we glued it around like we did on the lines the lines here we're gonna make sure that we have there's no places that we found where the screwdriver goes in that would indicate that we have a leak and if we did we take a little bit of glue on the screwdriver and tap it in there, clean it off. But it looks like we did a good job. Don't have any leaks. Not always the case, but it's good to check. And we're gonna make sure we have, we pull the inside part of the sleeve out enough so that we can put glue on each side here. And then we're going to overlap like that. First, we're gonna take a cloth and clean it. Gonna get a little bit of heptane like we did before. In fact, I'm actually gonna shrink that just a little bit. It doesn't quite need that much overlap. It's about halfway in between there. We're gonna use a little bit of N-heptane that we had. Again, make sure you have windows open, filters going, air, a fan going, something. Um, so you don't really wanna be breathing this all day. Make sure you wear gloves, make some nice, clean spots where we're going to put glue just to make, make it bond a little bit better that way we won't have quite as much of a problem trying to get it to adhere and ideally you'll have a clean workspace we've been working on this one so there is a little bit of dust left but that's not the end of the world Make sure it's fairly even all the way around if we can. We're gonna get a jar, empty jar, um, close to the size of your tube. Um, this one's just a bit small. I made this tube a little bit on the large side. But this way you can work, and you don't have to, but this way you can work. You can put glue, overlap, and roll it really well with the brayer so you have something to press against. Because if you do it flat and try to roll, it might work, but you also might have some uh, some unpleasant side effects of wrinkling and such. So you can see I've got two seams here. They line up pretty well. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on each side for a little duration. Fold it over, roll it, make sure there's no, no visible uh, leaks or gaps, and move to the next section. All right, so I have my little bit of glue that I've decanted out of the main container. That way if it dries out, not that big a deal. We don't lose that much glue. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on each side here. And like we did before, you can tape off to give you a guide because you want about the same amount of glue on this side as you do on that side. Um, you can always clean off extra, but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a guide. I didn't this time, which I'll probably regret, but. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Um, and you can put some glue on the backing here on, on this guy as well to keep it from curling. I will advise though, sometimes that can make it difficult to work with because it does stiffen it. So curling it over is a little trickier. So you're gonna give it a little bit of time, a few seconds to kind of gel and then fold it over. 
and you're not gonna wanna pull on it too much as far as stretch it. You're gonna want it to have basically the same um, consistency as it does when it's just kind of laying there because otherwise it's gonna be a bit of a problem. When you get to the end, you're gonna have too much or too little um, to, to work with if it stretches out of shape. And so we're just gonna kind of move this around get it about the right, about the same as it was before, um, or as it was over here, get it about the same width all the way around. I mean, it's never perfect, but close is pretty good. Um, so just like with the vinyl, you're gonna wanna go back just a little bit. This stuff, you're not gonna wanna peel back up if you can help it. It does kind of distort it, distort the material if you peel it, um, but just get as close as you can to where you stops so there's no gaps in the material in the glue. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have a problem of having, a, it's an inflatable inflatable piece, so you're gonna have problems of air leak. So again, glue on each side, and on, seems like this, just by its nature, you're gonna have the tendency for it to gap here. Um, because there seems it's not gonna mesh flat material to material, um, so I generally put a little bit of extra glue in there to fill in a bit. Um, you're also going to want to make sure sorry, um, you're also going to want to make sure that you have as little glue on the inside as possible between the layers because you don't want to glue the layers together if you can help it. Um, so it's a little bit finicky but it is absolutely doable. So again, on this side of the seam, I'm putting a hefty amount of glue here. Not enough so it'll, hopefully, not enough so it'll squish under in between the layers, because uh, again, we don't want to glue the layers together, but enough so hopefully it'll seal itself nicely along the seam. So probably should have left that a little bit longer to cure, but that's what we got. <laughs> And then right away, you're gonna use the roller. Make sure you get as much of that as possible. Um, on the seams, especially if you have a, a shorter roller, you can use the end to kind of roll up into those seams to make sure that glue gets as much contact as possible. Um, chances are good, you're gonna to have to go back and put more glue in for that anyway, but it's worth trying as much as you can to get it while it's there. So we're just gonna do this all the way around, piece by piece. And when we get to the end, we'll use our very small screwdriver to do the same thing we did to poke in at the edges and test to see if there's any leaks. All right, cool. Now that we've got it all completed all the way around, we're gonna take the small, small uh, screwdriver and gradually just kind of tap it into that seam. See if there's any spots that we might have might have missed. Since it's inflatable. I mean, I would probably do this on anything I was working on, but it's especially important when it needs to hold air. There's just a little bit. There's almost always a little bit of a, a divot on the, the seams, even though I added a bunch of glue there. So I'm gonna dip my tiny screwdriver in a tiny amount of glue and kind of tap it in there a little bit and then immediately press down really hard with my finger. Um, ideally, it's best if you can get a roller in there, but my roller's a little bit big today for that. Then wipe off the screwdriver so you have a clean working space again and pick up where you left off. You can see I smeared some glue along here, so we'll clean that up in a minute. Going. I was pretty glue heavy today, so there might not be too many spots. Oh, is that one? No, it's fine. So it's worth taking the time to do this to make sure it's down. Because latex, unlike PVC, latex will tend, because it is so sticky uh, and grippy, it will tend to bond with itself temporarily. 
Um, even if you don't have glue, even if you just clean it with heptane, it'll tend to kind of stick to itself really well. And it'll look like it's glued, but it's not, it's tricky. Um, so this will kind of help you figure out if it's tricking you or if you really did get it glued down all the way. And I'm going around a second time just to make sure. Yup. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, so we're gonna take it out of here. Well, actually I'll leave it. You can either take it out or leave it on the jar to wipe it down with some heptane. I've got a little bit in a jar here because you don't really want to have a lot all at once. It tends to be pretty pretty toxic stuff. Not awful, but not great to breathe. So I'm gonna cover it up when I'm not using it. Paper towel. And I used to use cloths, but I found that the cloths tended to shed a little bit too much for me. I'm sure you can get cloths that don't, but weirdly paper towels do a pretty good job. It looks like here I might have, is there a spot? Nope. It's just this. Okay. And since I used a lot of glue today, I'm probably going to need to use more heptane than normal. I'll probably have to go around a few times to get everything off. Because um, we like to be thorough, we like our, our gear to look nice. Um, latex as a material is more expensive than, uh, than PVC, so the products are going to be more expensive. So you really want to make sure people looking at it are getting their money's worth. Make sure it's really good work. Yep. So we're going to keep doing this all the way around, make sure it's all nice and clean. And then we're gonna dust it with, uh, with talc like we typically would, and not cornstarch um, because it can promote latex allergy, so we can use talc. And then we'll wrap it up and set it off. All right, so you can see we've cleaned it up nicely. We have, I mean, there's a little bit of dust from just environmental dusting but you can see we've cleaned up all the glue marks there's no more smears or anything it's all nice and shiny so we're gonna take some talc this handy little sock we're gonna dust it because like PVC it sticks to itself unlike PVC it sticks to itself more <laughs> We're gonna make sure that's all nice and dusty. I'm gonna not want to fluff it up too much because talc's not great to breathe, but it's still a better option than cornstarch right now. We've got plenty on the inside. I'm good. We're going to, one last time, make sure we haven't missed any big spots. Take our small screwdriver, just kind of tap it in gently. You're not going to want to jab in that, because you don't want to actually jab holes in it, but just make sure everything's nice and tight in there. Pretty good. Don't see any big holes. And so we're going to inflate it uh, pretty much right away in case there's any glue hanging out there that we had oozed in. That'll separate it out pretty well. Um, so we're going to inflate it and let it test overnight and see if it loses any air. And of course, if it does, we'll leak check it. We'll find it for it. We'll find a find the leaks and fix them. Um, but generally, it's a pretty good material to work with, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem.
so we have it inflated. You can see, unless we had uh, sealed the end, which some, I think that's an option to seal the end, it's an upgrade, um, but most people just want it looped through. You should be able to pull it all the way through this way. Make sure there's enough dust all over it so it doesn't stick all the way through this way. One of those little things you played with as a kid. So I generally uh, test it overnight. Um, like uh, like we said before with the, the um, seams, you're not going to want to pull on it too hard because the latex glue we use, which is basically rubber cement, it says paper cement, but it's rubber cement, um, is takes a while to cure. So you're going to want to kind of give it a little bit of um, a little bit of cure time for about 24 hours. And then you can kind of, you know, pull on it gently and make sure it stays together, but normally it should. And then we'll uh, make sure it's all good. Make sure every all the clean cleaning's done. Um, dust it real well and send it off to the customer. Mm -hmm.